listen carefully to these two words. Loose, lose. You'll notice that this one is shorter than this one. These are the lengths. But the first one looks longer. It has an extra vowel in it. Now, if we look them up in a dictionary, they appear to be the same length, with a long oo in both. So why is loose shorter than lose when we actually say it? The answer lies in the consonant sounds at the end. In order to explain this, meet hissy snake, s, and buzzy bee, z. The snake's sound, s, is made using a lung to push air out of its body. It doesn't actually use its tongue when it does this. But what we can say is that this hissing sound is air and closure. In the snake's case, the closure is in the throat. And humans replicate this with air from our lungs and a closure in the mouth. S. The z in lose is different. This sounds like the buzzing of a bee. Z. Now, a bee doesn't have lungs. The noise it makes is vibration. Its wings move very quickly up and down, and we can hear this vibration is something similar to the zzz sound we make. The bee's wings move at roughly 200 flaps per second. Humans replicate this with their voice box, or larynx. Our vocal folds can flap at a great variety of speeds, but 80 to 300 is typical when voicing, so somewhat similar to a bee's wings. So when we make zzz, we use air, closure, and vibration. So s is a voiceless sound, no vibration. Z is a voiced sound, vibration. All speech sounds can be defined in this way. Think p, which is voiceless, and b, which is voiced. Many sounds come in pairs, like this. T, d, k, g, f, v, th, z, s, z. So you can see in each of these pairs, the mouth position was the same. But the first one was voiceless, and the second made with voice. Others do not come in pairs. <sighs> has no voiced partner in English. And m, n, n, w, r, y, l are all voiced without voiceless partners. Voiceless sounds are also labelled fortis, meaning strong, because the air is compressed more when we make them. Voiced sounds are soft, or leanis. Going back to our example of loose, lose, you can see then that loose ends in a voiceless or fortis sound, whereas lose ends in a voiced or leanis sound. Something very interesting happens when voiceless consonants appear after vowel sounds. The vowel sound is shortened. Compare. Rope, robe, seat, seed, leaf, leave, search, surge, and our first example, loose, lose. In each case, everything about the words is the same, except for the voicing of the final consonants. But this causes a significant difference in their pronunciations, as the vowel sounds on the left are shortened as a result. This process is called prefortis clipping, and it is particularly noticeable in English in long vowel sounds. E, U, E, O, R, A, OI, I, O, OW, EAR. Note that some of these may have variations in dictionaries. So all of these vowel sounds will be long before voiced consonants and shortened before voiceless consonants. Unfortunately, this is not reflected in phonemic charts, so you will see the length dots for monophthongs in dictionaries even when the sound is shortened. So in the pair seat and seed, they appear to be the same length in dictionaries. These are the phonemic transcriptions. There is a symbol for reduced vowel length in the full international phonetic chart, which is one length mark instead of two. So seat and seed look like this which helps to visually distinguish the lengths. The only drawback is that this type of phonetic transcription isn't really used outside of academia, so it has limited reach. So, we now know why loose is shorter than lose. It's the fortis consonant sound at the end. But there's another problem here, the spelling. Shouldn't they be the other way round? 
Loose has one more O than lose, but it's shorter. Well, this is essentially an accident, an exception caused by the slightly random process English went through as most of its spellings were fixed centuries ago. After all, most English spellings do tell us the voicing. Mate, made. Knife, knive. Perch, purge. In each of these pairs, and this is true of most spellings, the word on the left ends in what looks like a voiceless consonant, and the ones on the right end in what looks like a voiced consonant. But with some spellings, this just isn't the case, and SE at the end of a word is one of those. So, you have base, phase, dose, rose, cease, ease. Some words even have both, depending on word type. House, house, close, close, use, use. Old English simply didn't use the letter Z to transcribe the voiced consonant. S was preferred. In the case of loose, there are other words with a similar spelling and pronunciation. Moose, noose, goose, which are all pronounced with a reduced OO followed by S. Lose, however, is a strange spelling. The logical thing would be to spell it with O-O-Z-E, like booze or snooze. But very few words have managed this kind of modern spelling transition. The S is kept from the Old English spelling of this word. And if there are any Anglo-Saxons watching, please forgive my pronunciation. Lusian, meaning to be lost. Most words spelt with consonant plus O-S-E, however, are pronounced with diphthong O. Nose rose, chose, pose. Though there is one other word whose pronunciation is ooze. In fact, I just said it. Whose. So there you have it. Perhaps the strangest word pair in English is caused by pre-fortis clipping on the one side and an old English spelling on the other. That's English for you. Pronunciation studio.